when you can start when you're ready. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tony Bergantino. I'm the acting director of the Wyoming State Climate Office and the Water Resources Data System. And we're glad to have you with us for this month's uh, Wyoming Conditions and Outlooks webinar. Uh, the webinar is presented this month by my office, along with the University of Wyoming Extension, USDA Northern Plains Climate Hub, uh, Natural Resources Conservation Service, US Geological Survey, the National Weather Service, and Missouri River Basin Forecast Center. And today's outlook, we'll look at some current conditions and snowpack, followed by surface water status, uh, weather forecasts and outlooks, and then uh, flood potential. And then uh, to top things off, we'll finish by letting you know how you can get involved and to help be those extra eyes on the ground to improve the, the drought monitoring process in the state. So starting off with uh, current conditions, we have the just released uh, drought monitor map. This weekly map is released each Thursday morning and spans a seven day period ending Tuesday morning. So this one shown here is as of March 15th. And these areas in green here are areas where we saw some improvement since our, our last webinar. But if you look, you'll see that there's uh, quite a few areas where we've got red, which are areas where we, we went downhill. And unfortunately those larger areas uh, uh, red uh, constitute a bigger percentage of the state than the areas where we had the improvements. So uh, it was kind of a kind of a net loss overall. This is the 14 day uh, precipitation percentile uh, from the 3rd of March to uh, yesterday and shows some areas here where we're well above the mean and our median in terms of precipitation, uh, a little bit less, but still in the nice blue colors down here in the southeast. But areas of concern we have are uh, Western Park County, Teton County, this Northwest area here, and then some little bits of areas over here in the, in the Northeast are uh, we're below the median as well. Looking at that same map over the 90 day period, uh, just towards uh, getting close to Christmas to, to yesterday, uh, Similar areas uh, above the median, a lot of that influenced by some of the, the precipitation we had here recently. Uh, it works its way back through the, the time scale, but you can see Bighorn, uh, Fremont County, uh, Sweetwater County, Uinta, uh, have these nice bluish uh, purple colors here. But at the same time, we're still seeing the you know, Teton County, Western Park County, uh, west side of the Wind River Range, down into Lincoln, and then especially up here in the in the Northeast, we're seeing areas below to, to well below median. And look at it, uh, this is 30 day precipitation. This is a, a raw departure from the average. Uh, so it takes, you know, what precipitation should we have over this period of time and compares it to what we actually did get. And you can see that the higher elevations primarily are the ones where we're, we're seeing these red colors, uh, especially here in the, in the Tetons. And, and the areas where we were seeing on previous slides where we were in deficits. And why is this a concern? Well, high elevation precipitation is snowpack, and that indicates we're not, not seeing what we, were, we should be seeing, but we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later on in the, in the webinar. This is the uh, standardized precipitation evapotranspiration index. It's uh, similar, similar to the standard precipitation index, but has the added component of uh, evapotranspiration. And you can see that area of wetness that we were seeing before it shows up in these maps as well at the, at the 30 day. And at the same time, we see the dryness over here in the, in the western side of the state at the 30 day as well. And moving around clockwise here, we have 60 day and uh, one year map representations as well. And you can see the area here in the Northwest is just standing out at all those time frames. And at longer term uh, periods, we're seeing uh, some long-term deficits in precipitation up here in the, in the Northwest or Northeast, which is, uh, you see that area on the, on the drought monitor map being in, in pretty red area. Looking at 14 day average minimum temperature, uh, cold would best describe it uh, down here. This is showing the departure from, from average. Uh, looking at some areas, uh, Sublette County was about the 
closest to average uh, within zero to three degrees uh, below average. But you get down here in the south central part of the state, coming across over here into the eastern areas, we were looking at temperatures that were nine to 12 degrees below average for the, for the last two weeks. And in terms of actual numbers up here in the upper right, uh, for minimum temperatures, well below freezing uh, statewide with some of the warmest parts being the, the northeastern plains, uh, the eastern plains here in this the area here in, uh, in Platte County seeing, you know, in the 20 degree range for uh, nighttime lows. And switching over to maximum temperatures, uh, again, cold is the word of the day here. Uh, a, a bigger area than we were seeing even in the minimum temperatures uh, are daytime maximum temperatures for quite a bit of the state, except for this uh, western quarter and then a bit up here in the northeast uh, where it was uh, up to six degrees below average. By and large, the rest of the state was in the six to 12 uh, degrees below average, with the exception of the, the Medbows and some of the Sierra Madre down here in the, in the south central part of the state. Uh, an absolute temperature again up here in the upper upper right, you can see some of the warmer parts, uh, the upper Bighorn Basin, and then over here in the eastern plains, uh, high elevations getting uh, well below freezing at night. Uh, we did at least break up above the freezing uh, on a 14 day average for a fair amount of the state. Uh, so maybe, maybe we're getting out of some of these colder temperatures. Uh, this is a, a new map for, for people who have been following this. This is showing the 30-day average mean temperature as a departure from average. Uh, so this is since basically since our last webinar, what the temperatures have been doing. And Sublette County, again, being the quote-unquote warmest at uh, zero to three degrees below average. And then the same culprit areas, the Bighorn, South Central, and Eastern, uh, Central, East Central part of the state being in the of uh, six to nine degrees below average with the rest of it being uh, three to six degrees below average. I'm doing my best uh, Ed McMahon impersonation of how cold was it? Well, these are four stations. Uh, these are weather stations run by the state engineer's office that we're collecting data for. And this shows 30 days of hourly minimum temperatures. So basically again, from the, our last webinar to, to this morning, and you see two definite periods here, uh, latter part of February, and then the bit we just got through here within you know, that first week in March. Uh, the first week of March one was saw our coldest temperatures uh, approaching 30 below at these four stations here at Bags down here, Devil's Gate over here in uh, actually in uh, southern North Toronto County, and then uh, Douglas and Encampment, uh, all in the blue or the purple areas. So. Saw quite a few records broken when this came through, and not only minimum temperatures, but there were also a few record low high temperatures. So where the, the high temperature is the, the lowest it's ever been. I'll switch over to soil moisture. You can see we've got some uh, little bit of improvement compared to two weeks ago here in uh, Fremont County, up in the Hot Springs County, but a lot of the western area here and in the south, we're, we're starting to really get into the reds, uh, you know, less than 10th percentile. Uh, the area down here is shrinking where we were in the, the 20th to 30th percentile, as is this uh, area here that we were about at the median two weeks ago. We still have a little bit at the median, but as I say, the area is, is starting to shrink. Uh, soil temperatures, you, these are what we call uh, poker chip maps. It shows the soil temperature stacked by depth. Um, we have uh, five depths recorded from two inches down to 40 inches or about five centimeters to one meter. And these two stations up here are from our Upper Missouri River uh, project that we're putting in. And then these five down here are run by the state engineer's office. And as you can kind of see, we're Still below freezing at a lot of depths here. If you can read this, uh, very very close to the freezing mark at surface. Uh, and some of them a little bit more so than others. Uh, the Sheridan Station is actually pretty much uh, thawed out. We didn't see much freezing at that one uh, during the year. And some of them are a little bit cooler. Uh, here we're down to 31, even at the 40 inches. So frost depth of over a meter. 
And then looking at soil moisture in the same fashion with this poker chip map, you can see with the exception of the, the Sheridan station, which has our deeper, deeper depths about 42%, uh, but a lot of oranges and, and reds on the on the stacks here for the for the other stations. And that kind of goes in with what the map we were seeing before was showing. Uh, soil moisture at the Thunder Basin grasslands at the spot right here and the uh, just at the uh, Converse uh, Campbell border. You see the soil moisture is starting to gradually come up here, but we did have two depth dips here, which were related to those uh, really cold temperature spells that came through, which kind of uh, the way it reacts with moisture in the ground, it's, uh, your, your soil moisture does go down for those little steps. But overall, we're, we are coming up a bit there with uh, some of the melt off from some of the storms we've had actually going into the soil out there. So that's a, that's a good sign. Looking at our drought timeline here, this is from uh, 2000 to present. And you can see here that we, although we're completely in a D category for the entire state, we did go uh, decrease in the actual drought category. The D1 through D4 did go down by barely a quarter percent, but uh, that was a, a bit of improvement, at least area-wise. However, when we zoom into, and this is just the previous timeline, but we're showing uh, just from 2020, uh, January of 2020 to present, uh, unfortunately, while the amount of uh, the D1 to D4 did go down minimally, the total area in D3 or extreme drought went from 11.07 to 19.65%, which is, if I can do the math, 8.58% uh, increase in the area of uh, extreme drought in the state, uh, getting up to about 20%, which is roughly an increase of Oh, about 8,000 square miles. We're at 27 weeks here now where we've been in a, uh, a D category, either the uh, abnormally dry or one of the actual drought categories uh, here. And the last time we were at this much D3 was back on the 19th of October in uh, 2021, which makes uh, 87 weeks in a row now where part of the state has been in uh, D3 or extreme drought. So with that, I will turn it over to Jim Fahey with the Natural Resources Conservation Service to talk about snowpack conditions. Yeah, thanks, Tony, and thanks everyone for having me for the talk here. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, the, the snow water equivalent map kind of uh, parallels or what's going on with the drought monitor map. Um, as you can see, uh, currently uh, by March 15th, Statewide, we were 83% of median, and most areas, uh, like we said, are below. Uh, we had Laramie at the highest at 99% of median, and uh, the Northeast Basins, Belfouche and Cheyenne, uh, the lowest at the, in the 60s. Um, comparing that to 2021, uh, statewide, uh, after we picked up that uh, early March snowstorm last year, uh, especially in the lower and the flattened Laramie, we, we were up to 95% of median. Um, as you see, there's a lot more green on that map uh, than there are uh, than there is currently uh, this year. Next slide. And just some snow water equivalent traces for select basins. Uh, looking at the snake that is really, really bad this year. Uh, as you can see that, that uh, late uh, early January through February with no snow at all uh, really did in the, the Snake River Basin there picking up a little bit but as you can see that's the current trace in black and yesterday uh, last year's traces in that blue color and the median traces in green they're at 78 percent of median uh, looking at the tongue a little bit better uh, 90 percent of median but again uh, below last year's uh, snow water equivalent trace as you can see they did have some late season snow uh, that really increased their uh, water equivalents uh, in the late season last water year and then the last look at uh, upper north platte uh, 94 percent of median um, and kind of right on the same uh, tra trace as uh, last year again but below median and uh, we'll just see if, if we haven't get any late season uh, snowstorms increase the uh, snow water equivalents for uh, 
all basins. Next slide. Here's the basin precipitation uh, from the last water supply outlook report, looking at the uh, February precipitation. Again, the far west, southwest, uh, no, no snow accumulation whatsoever. So very, very low percent of median for precipitation. A little bit better the rest of the state, especially uh, uh, the Bighorn Powder and the lower North Platte. And looking for uh, the water year combined, October 1st through the end of February. Uh, not doing too bad. Uh, a lot of places are, are at near median or above median, as you can see by the, uh, the lighter green color. And then, again, of course, the Northeast still lagging behind on those two bases up in the Northeast part of the state. Next slide. And reservoir storages, uh, these are I'm um, looking at, you're looking at the darker color percent, current capacity, last year's capacity, and then the current median, percent of median, and then last, last year's percent of median. Just uh, looked up some numbers for the Snake, uh, Jackson Lake, especially on the lungs for the Snake River Basin. Um, they are at, uh, what, about 20% capacity, and they're at about 177 to 178,000 acre feet. They need 669 uh, acre feet roughly to fill. The forecast for uh, March 1st from the NRCS was April to July forecast was 660,000 acre feet. Uh, talking to the Bureau of Reclamation, uh, their forecast, they came in with 603,000 acre feet. So there is a danger that that reservoir may not fill. And that's the first time I've seen it in my 18, 19 runoffs. So we'll just have to hope that we get a, some uh, April precipitation uh, along the Snake River Basin. And of course, and the last thing is uh, the other two, two major basins or two major reservoirs, the Seminole and Pathfinder are uh, combined are, are below 50%, 50% or below capacity. Um, so those two areas, the Snake and the uh, Upper North Platte, we're just hoping we get some more water this spring. Uh, next slide. And just the highlights from the water supply outlook, uh, March 4th, March 1st report, uh, the snowpack and snow water equivalents were below median by late February. Again, we show that in the graphic, the precipitations uh, totals were below median, but we're near to, no, to near to above median for the water year precipitation totals. Uh, Red Force storages for late February continue to be below median. That's been like that since uh, the fall. Uh, the stream flow snowmelt volumes, April through July, across Wyoming, our forecast is to generally be below median. Next slide. Then looking at, at it graphically, uh, generally below median statewide, but we do have some better and some worse areas. Uh, the higher areas, are gonna be uh, are along the Wind River Basin, especially the Southern Wind River Basin. Kind of a unique situation going on this year, uh, coming into uh, middle of March, into April. The North part of the basin is lower in snow water equivalents than the Southern part of the basin. And that's usually flip-flopped uh, as before we come into the precipitation regime for the Eastern, East of the Continental Divide, the spring precip. So that's, Anyway, for instance, the northern part of the basin is about 80 to 85% of median, and the southern part of the basin is about uh, 95 to 110% of median. Kind of odd, not seen that in quite a few years. Uh, and then the other better lo location is the uh, parts of the uh, upper North Platte or near median in their uh, stream flow forecasts. And the two areas to watch for, are, of course, the powder and powder in parts of the tongue, and then the uh, Belfouche well below median on the uh, snow water or the, the stream flow forecast. And with the snow, snow that we had most of January and February, uh, the upper green, exception for uh, the upper portion of the green basin, the rest of the rest of the basin is, is trend, trending sharply uh, below median uh, for March 1st forecast. So that's all I have. Thanks, Jim. Next, we have Aaron Fiaschetti with the U.S. Geological Survey talking about surface water. 
Thank you, Tony. Um, we really don't have a whole lot new to report. Uh, we've mentioned that it's been cold in Wyoming and uh, the majority of our sites here shown on this uh, current streamflow condition map for the state uh, shown in gray are still in ice and not reporting values right now to the to the web. So, but in general, you can see that most of our sites are not reporting values are in ice. Um, the sites that are reporting values are generally up in the the mountains in an area of a higher gradient, or they're below a tail water, something along those lines, where we do have a values coming in. So you see kind of a, a mix of uh, reds in the uh, western part of the state and then some some kind of green values here and there. And we'll we'll kind of bump around the state a little bit and take a look at a couple of those values. So uh, next slide, please. So this is just a seven day average flow. And, and I should have explained in the last slide that what we're seeing here is um, these are percentiles of flows. So a green is a normal percentile. So it's the 25th to 70th fifth percentile. So uh, you could have a value that's uh, below the median and near the 25th percentile, which I would say is probably kind of a, a lower flow and still show that that's normal. So it's normal to have a low flow and it's normal to have a higher flow of close to the 75th. The orange is uh, below the 25th percentile. The darker red is uh, below the 10th percentile. So that's getting into a really low flow. So we, we have a couple of those uh, in the Western part of the state. And then the, the bright red below is, that would be um, uh, a record low for the, this time of year. Um, so we do have one value there. And I'm not sure which, I uh, should have that at hand, which site that is, but I don't. Um, so compared to uh, last month, there really hasn't been much of a change with the limited sites that we do have uh, reporting values that aren't in ice. So everything's nearly the same as kind of what you'd expect. Things have been cold. The precipitation's probably been mostly snow and we haven't started to see any runoff. So and that'll probably remain the same till temperatures warm up and uh, things change. Uh, next slide, please. So just kind of looking at a couple um, sites that we have, um, as was previously mentioned that uh, the Jackson Lake is very low. So this is the Snake River above Jackson Lake at Flag Ranch. And you can see those uh, those stream flows are, are very low right now. They've gone below the the fifth percentile um, and even kind of a little bit off the off of that expanded hydrograph there. Um, so flows are very low. They've continued to be low coming into Jackson Lake and out of uh, Grand Teton Park. So next slide, please. Moving down to the Green River below Fontenelle Reservoir. Um, Flows have been in that normal normal range. They look like they're still a little bit below the median. Um, it appears that they've been moving some water out of Fontenelle Reservoir and downstream. So that's probably that managed flow that you're keeping keeping the flows in that normal green uh, percentiles there. Um, so th things appear to look pretty pretty normal in that location on the Green River. Next slide, please. Moving up to the Bighorn at Kane, um, things have kind of been chugging along. Um, that black line is where the current conditions are, uh, chugging along in, in normal conditions. It doesn't look like uh, water's been kind of being moved out of Boyson or Buffalo Bill. Those uh, reservoir contents haven't changed much in the past uh, two months. So it, it appears that the, the Bighorn is experiencing pretty, pretty normal uh, conditions right now. Um, so that, that looks pretty good right there. And then we'll move over to the North Platte at the state line. And it seems like kind of since the start of the water year here in October that we've been in that uh, below normal, that 10 to 24th percentile and kind of, uh, 
and it seems like things have been kind of receding a little bit more. So flows have been pretty low over there. Um, I know that that's a, a highly managed system. Um, so um, I don't know if there's a, a, an explanation on for storage over there, or if it's a combination of uh, just low inflows into the plat and a combination of uh, some, some storage at the same time. So moving on, uh, this is uh, the teacup diagram of this month from yesterday, March 16th, compared to a month, month ago. And not much has changed kind of looking at reservoirs around the state. There's been some small increases, one or 2% change in contents um, between last month and this month. The, the one exception is a small a uh, couple percent change at Fontenelle that's been kind of decreasing over the past couple months. Um, but in average, everything's been kind of hanging in where it was left at the kind of the end of last water year in September. Um, no major changes in increase in storage as we're just kind of locked into winter base flows now and uh, runoff has not begun. So in the, the uh, contents and that was presented earlier and maybe a little better fashion, but they vary throughout the state. Some are as high into the, the mid eighties is a uh, percent full to uh, the twenties. So there it's, it's all over the board. And that's all I have. Thank you, Tony. Thanks Aaron. And now we'll switch over to forecasts and outlooks and we'll have Lance Vanden Bogart with the National Weather Service in Riverton to talk about this. All right. Thank you very much, Tony. And thank you all for having me on here. Um, so I won't belabor this slide too much, but this is just the Wyoming snowpack overview, a uh, slightly different view on it uh, compared to the typical colors. You can see that the, the pinks to reds are gonna be below average. So you can see a lot of those 70% out, out west, um, a lot of 80s and 90s in the central portion of the state, and then even some 60s in the northeastern portion of the state. So that gets uh, you know underlines the same uh, same tune we've all been singing of below average, uh, not incredibly below, but definitely definitely not quite as much snow as we would expect this time of year. Uh, it also does highlight a few of those individual sites that uh, have been lucky winners, uh, blue there in the Wind River Basin, that are helping keep the Wind River Basin a little bit higher. So we'll go ahead and uh, step forward here and look at precipitation. So this is just over the next seven days. So um, you know, this is only one fourth of the time period between now and our next meeting. But as we look at the more detailed portion of the forecast, it really looks like Sunday uh, the 20th through Monday the 21st is going to be our, our next best chance of some widespread precipitation. So a lot of this will probably fall with it with this next uh, long wave trough that's moving through the region. You can see these amounts are not incredible, but it will add a little bit. At least it's not a completely dry forecast. Um, the, the winters are going to be uh, out west, although for the mountains, those aren't those aren't incredible amounts of uh, snow water equivalent. But we do have some precipitation that will likely likely hit the basins. The the basins that currently look to receive the least are going to be, uh, you know, the upper green there in the southwestern portion of the state. And then also across the northeast, which are unfortunately areas that are uh, not doing so hot right now as far as uh, as we saw in soil moisture. So let's step forward to the next slide here. And this is going to be, um, you know, past those first seven days, kind of looking at the next next chunk of time. Um, do we see any large scale signals? So uh, this being my first time presenting, you guys haven't heard me talk about the weighted coin flip, but that's how I like to talk about these graphics with uh, friends and family is just that, um, you know, there's a lot of things in the larger scale climate system that uh, we can look at, you know, Pacific Ocean temperatures and such to get a feel for, hey, how, how are things looking, uh, looking out in the, in, the, in the future here? These ones are still actively modeled, the six to 10 day time frame. So uh, we'll just start off here and say, you know, for temperatures, it look, looks like near normal for a, a, lot of the, a lot of the state. That's your best bet as far as temperatures go. Maybe a little, uh, a slight lean towards warmer in the north and the west. And then uh, for precipitation, it's going to be a, a stronger lean towards below normal, especially in the upper Green River Basin there in the southwestern portion of the state. Uh, but then near normal for the rest of the area as we kind of sit 
sit between uh, between weather systems in this time frame. Go ahead and uh, move to the eight to fourteen day here. Again, kind of a somewhat similar story temperature wise, except for it's the southern portion of the state that has a slightly better chance of being above normal. Um, you know, next week, and uh, for precipitation, that warmth is going to come with some uh, drier air as well, likely. So uh, a slight lean towards below normal. But these are not these are not strong signals. You can see on the um, the little keys there how many different shades of colors you really have to get before you start saying uh, really confident. So these are you know climatology is probably going to be your your best bet over the next two weeks for a lot of areas, save for you know in that in that shorter time frame with that that dryer that we saw on the previous slide. But let's go ahead and step forward one more here. Um, just showing a hazard outlook. Not a lot of hazards that we're that we're looking at. Um, a slight chance for for high winds there uh, in the northeastern uh, half or third of the state. That's that's nothing too surprising. We we like to be a windy state here. So I uh, just wanted to uh, bring this one back and uh, let everyone know there's there's no major you know uh, slow moving cutoff lows that look to to impact a majority of the state. So um, I think that's all I have to say on that one. So we'll step forward and look at a little bit more of a seasonal look. Now here, um, this is where we really get into that weighted coin flip that I was talking about before, where we're looking at Pacific, you know, the Climate Prediction Center meteorologists that are that specialize in this, they look at uh, ocean temperatures and, and larger scale atmosphere uh, trends to see what are we looking at. And as we look for the April to June timeframe, we are seeing uh, some some leans towards uh, warmer, especially for the southern portion of the state. Uh, and then for precipitation, that's also going to come with added dryness. So the spring, it's not looking like there's a big signal for us to make up a lot of that the deficits that we're currently seeing. Uh, that that certainly can change with a you know a couple systems that are are not currently. Uh, forecast yet as far as details go but this is this is your um, your most likely scenario here is going to have a little bit warmer and a little bit drier than normal as we move through the spring into the early summer all right and I think that is my last slide so uh, I'll pass back to you Tony I believe Kevin is up next we'll turn her over to Kevin thanks Lance yep all righty uh, thank you Tony um, I'm Kevin Lau, I'm with the National Weather Service at the uh, River Forecast Center in Kansas City and uh, consulted with uh, the other two river forecast centers that service the state of Wyoming. And, um, you know, given the, the uh, snow conditions being below normal generally and the uh, dry soils, there is uh, really no flood risk uh, anywhere within the state of Wyoming, uh, regardless of the basin that you're in. Um, would have to caveat that, that our uh, river outlooks do not take into account uh, river ice action. So can't rule out a uh, breakup jam uh, calling, causing some, some local impacts. Um, I did put in the chat window, the um, URL for the uh, U.S. spring outlook. So NOAA issued the spring outlook with regard to flooding for the entire United States uh, just a couple of hours ago. And so uh, if you're interested in that, the link is in the chat. So um, so I think that's all I've got there, Tony. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Kevin. And to conclude for us today, uh, Wendy Kelly with UW Extension and the USDA Northern Plains Climate Hub will discuss how you can get involved. All right, great. Thank you, Tony. You can go ahead and advance the next slide. So I always like to bring this back to the most current U.S. Drought Monitor map, which was released this morning, and it's released the um, every Thursday morning. So as Tony indicated at the beginning of the webinar, since our last webinar, we did see some improvements in the southeast and south central parts of the state. And then moving further west though, and north and north central Wyoming, we had some degradations on the US drought monitor since we last met. So with that being said, and, and thinking about what we heard today on our current conditions throughout the state, as well as the outlooks, 
I want everyone to know how they can get involved as well as letting uh, individuals that you work with as well. So one is the COCORAS program, which is reporting precipitation or lack of at your site, whether it might be your office or your house, of getting a standard uh, for, uh, ring gauge issued to you, and then reporting ideally on a daily basis. So the map on the right shows the active stations throughout Wyoming. Um, obviously, we're a sparsely populated state, but there's a lot of gaps and opportunities to help fill in um, to help us understand where precipitation is falling or not throughout the state. And then the map on the left is the map from this morning as of about 7 o'clock showing where precipitation and about how much had been received. If you have any questions about the COCORAS program and how to get a standard ring gauge for the program, you can reach out to myself or Tony Bergantino, who is the lead for the state on the program. The second opportunity I want to mention is the Seymour system, which is the condition monitoring observer report system. And you can see a bit.ly link on the screen. And this is where you can report conditions of all types from severely dry to severely wet and um, provide additional details for those conditions in an area. This is a really nice way to kind of raise the flag for the Wyoming conditions monitoring team who's observing and um, kind of monitoring the conditions throughout the state on a weekly basis and making recommendations to the US Drought Monitor. Um, so for example, in Sublette County, we had a report come in on March 9th. So we took a look at that um, to, and cross-checked it with the data that we were looking at in the maps as well. Next slide, please. So I always like to remind everyone that this is a public database. It's the national database, but it is public. So um, reports are available as well as photos for anyone to read and to see. We encourage you, if you are going to submit photos, to submit comparison photos showing what, for an example, um, a stock water pond, a stock pond uh, looks like on an average year compared to a dry year, and that will end, end this year, or a, a past year as well. So similar to rangeland monitoring photos are very helpful um, to help paint the picture because we're not familiar with specific pastures. And then regular reporting is also helpful I mean, if you're able to submit, you know, the first or the 15th of every month, or even if it's just during the growing season, um, that helps to start to paint the picture of that area for us. Next slide. So I just want to go ahead and thank each of the presenters today. You can see their names as well as the agency that they're affiliated with and their emails if you want to follow up and contact them. And then on the right hand side of your screen, I want to note the Wyoming Drought Information and Resources website. And this is a website that was started last year in response to questions we were getting from the public about where to find um, drought related information. And so we're, um, we'll start looking at this website and updating it again. Feel free to send us information or let us know if you see anything out of date or anything that's missing. And I want to note the Cocoa Raz program again, as well as the Steamwar system for uh, submitting reports to us. And of course, thank you to all of you for joining us today. And here in a moment, we'll transition uh, for questions.